Hey guys, welcome back to Separate Bedrooms. Today we're making a, what are we doing, like a chicken salad? Yeah, we're doing a Chinese salt and white pepper roasted chicken. Yeah, we're doing that because I have my gestational diabetes test tomorrow and we didn't want to have something that was crazy. Low carb, um, low, low carb. Low carb so I can pass this test. If not, I'm just gonna get Ozempic and then whole crew gonna be shredded. And we'll so. be sick you know it'll be sick either way either i have diabetes and we're gonna get ozempic or i don't have diabetes and that's fly too so no diabetes it's a win 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 and we get a fire chicken sandwich yeah and also salad. yeah this chicken is the chicken that my mom made the most at home so like let's say whatever your guys chicken is if it's like the ralph's chicken or or the albertson's roasted chicken that's the chicken that's most familiar to you. This is the chicken that's most familiar to me. It's my mom's salt and white pepper chicken. And when I say it's salt and white pepper, it's much more complicated than salt and white pepper, um, as you will see, but not that much more complicated. It's still a very simple recipe to make. And then we're also gonna pair it with a kale white bean salad, similar to the one at Erewhon. But with a couple little twists that you're gonna see. A little tweaks, you know? Yeah. I may have spoken too soon. Do we have white beans, babe? I thought we had white oh, beans. Oh, fuck. We might not have white beans. Oh, I fucked up. There's no white bean, but it's, it's okay. all good. We have everything else. Do we have like chickpeas or garbanzo beans? Yeah, I'm looking we here. Should. You know, we do not, but this is, this is fun to do the show like this on the fly. Sometimes things happen. How about this? Yeah, shit happens. I'm gonna put tuna, tonino tuna fillets in here. You know, motherfuckers love tinned fish. So this is jarred fish. Or should oh, I, should I? I'm good. Oh, oh, you can't eat I fish. I don't like, I'm not, I'm just not into, like, that's my one thing during pregnancy. It's like fish is grossing me out. Okay, it's okay. the smell of it. Okay, okay. Really? That grosses me out, so I just don't want it like lingering in our house. And then got it, just got it. Fish, and I'm gonna be like stuck downstairs. You know like, what, crying. I think it's fine to make this dish without beans. I think it's okay. I think it's cool to go no beans. We have, what What else is it, avocado? We have like some we other avocado. seeds we can put in there. Yeah, just more avocado, more yeah. seeds. You know what, this is great. You guys can see on the show, sometimes- Sometimes you the, don't have white beans. The best plans just backfire. They backfire, but we'll be good. You know, we have... Uh, we can pivot. Should I go, like, I'm gonna go look and see in the cabinet what we can pivot with. Me. But I feel pretty good. I mean, I could also fry up. No, I am I think I'm good. It's just more avocado, more sunflower. Yeah, more avocado, more sunflower. That's not bad. We have these, like, crispy fried onions. Oh, that's good. Let's do crispy fried onions. I don't know if there's onions. many left that'll be nice i think this is this is good so we're going crispy fried onion avocado kale salad no white bean which is totally fine also fewer carbs also less farting from me so everybody's happy um the first part of the dish is the chicken seasoning so I did some uh, Ina Garten, Tyler Florence, Pick Your Chef Food Channel shit today. There's a chicken already roasting in there. This is the chicken you're gonna see. Shout out. Then I'm gonna Ina. walk you through making the seasoning, and then like as soon as the seasoning is done, it's like bang! Look at this chicken! Because I always liked that on food shows when they got like the stunt food in the back. Do you like that, Julius? You fuck with the stunt food vibe and then let me see Szechuan peppercorn all right it's all right babe don't worry I, I don't think we have white bean we're good I'm gonna think about onions may or may not but we'll be okay we're good let's, let's do news let me I'll, I'm gonna look for Szechuan peppercorns news, news today yeah, what's the news there's a white bean shortage in California there's a white bean shortage. Go to Air One now, or you'll never be able to have kale white bean salad again. And your whole life will be over. Um, oh no, news today. Okay, so we read this article over the weekend that was the funniest article of all time. 
the New York Times interviewed Tim Robinson and basically the entire t- I don't think he wanted to do the article. Yeah. He didn't want to sit down for this interview and like, the entire time he was just talking about how much he loved spicy food and him and the journalist went to a Thai food restaurant and he kept upping the spice. He kept being like, I need the hottest thing on the menu. Like what's the spiciest you can make whatever he ordered. And then he was sweating. His voice was getting hoarse. Um, he basically like, couldn't talk and was having a full physical reaction to the spice and kept telling this person every question they were asking him like so what's your inspiration for i think you should leave and like what's this new season like and he was just like i really like spicy food i really fuck with spicy food (laughs) and suggested that they (laughs) name the article tim robinson really likes spicy food tim robinson likes it hot so if you're ever wondering if he gives up the bit he doesn't he lives for the bit. He's all fucking. He's yeah. living for the bit every day of his life, all all day. I love Tim Robinson, man. Me too. I, I think he's the funniest dude out right now. I do too. I, I want to get more into season three. I'm trying to do this new thing where I don't indulge myself in something I love. Yeah. If it's like a series that comes out on Netflix and has all the episodes. I try to give myself like one episode as a treat and then wait a couple days and have a new episode because I could fly through that season in like two hours. Yeah, we watched one episode, which <laughs> was a treat because I couldn't wait. Like, yo, Tim Robinson, our favorite, she introduced me to him. One of our like, f- I feel like first like Netflixy dates yeah. was watching I Think You Should Leave. And I was like, yo, what the fuck is this? This is the funniest shit I've oh ever seen. Oh my God, I remember being so scared to show you. Why? Because I feel like I think you should leave. It's so specific. It's like a specific brand of humor. And I was just, I didn't know if you were going to be like too sophisticated and like judge me for thinking it was nah. the funniest shit that I've ever seen in my life. And I kept prefacing, I kept being like, if you don't get it, like it's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I don't know, maybe it's not for everyone, but I think it's really funny. But it is funny because when we tell people for a while, we were like recommending it to people like, oh, you should watch this. And it's funny, like the... The, the line in the sand like there's either people that get it and think it's so funny yeah and then there's people that were like i didn't get it and i'm like we don't have the same humor and we're probably not compatible like, yeah we're just like not compatible like woo is also the number one tim robinson fan really yeah it's one of those things like now it, it's it's almost like in the 90s people that didn't eat sushi i was like we're not going to be friends now in 2023, if you don't like Tim Robinson, you don't get Tim Robinson. I'm just kind of like, we may not enjoy each other. You're not going to enjoy my company because like I would do some shit like he did to that journalist. Like yeah. who literally went there and was like, I don't want to talk to this journalist. Netflix is making me do this. So I'm going to eat so many chilies that it becomes like an insane, awkward situation and they can't force me to answer any questions. <laughs> like, yeah. This is a fucking genius. Full disclosure, we tried to get him on the pod. He was very friendly. He gave us his email, and then his people did not respond, which I respect. I'm like, he don't fucking know us, you know? I would just like to hang out with Tim Robinson. I would love to hang out with Tim Robinson. Yeah. I think you should podcast with us. That's my show. I think you Tim should Robinson. podcast with us. I think you should podcast us. with us. So, oh, I should tell you about the recipe while wifey was talking about the news very simple you've seen the technique before here i heated up this pan julius you have flashback of this (laughs) instant replay i heated up the pan i put in the anise first because anise takes a little longer to toast then i put the chili peppers at the very end i put in szechuan peppercorns and now i'm grinding all of this up and those are the flavors of my mom's Salt and white pepper roasted chicken. Um, it's Chinese say hua jiao ba jiao, which is anise, Szechuan peppercorn. And then also we add the chili pepper. And to finish, we're going to add a bunch of pink salt and white pepper. That is all you need to create like a very delicious. It's similar to the flavor of like salt and pepper calamari. Mm. when you go to a chinese place you know you get like fried calamari fried shrimp it's like salt and white pepper flavor it's very very similar to that truly one of my faves yeah noodle town favorite fried calamari god i miss noodle town yep 
Do you think that there's a noodle town equivalent in LA at all? <sighs> you know, the thing that no one in LA is going to beat with noodle town is yeah. noodle town is smack dab in the center of downtown. Yeah. So it's just like so easy to use. And like, I do think that matters about a restaurant is like, are you in a vicinity where I can frequent all the time and like vibe out here? Yeah. So I just, I, LA isn't centralized enough to have a place we would love that much. Yeah, that's true. It's definitely more about the vibe and just like everyone in there is screaming the entire time. And it, that yeah. sounds like it wouldn't be a fun time, but it makes it so much more enjoyable to be sitting at your table and you can hear every conversation and everyone who works there is screaming at each other. Yeah. And I've never felt more at home in my life. Yeah, like, oh, to yeah, be I'm honest. Like, these my uncles and I'm aunties. I'm like, this is great. I'm like, everyone here is mad. Do you, is did you best. and your mom yell at each other a lot growing up? Yeah. Word. Yeah, we would yell at each other a lot, but we would get over it super quick. So we would get in Same. like a really aggressive, intense fight and we'd be screaming. And I think if you were an outsider looking in, you'd be like, they'll never recover from that. And then five minutes later, my mom was like, okay, so what do you want to go eat? And I yeah. was like, yeah, let's go eat. And I like, like that. didn't need to talk about it. Didn't need to apologize. We're just the type of people that like, move on. Yeah. We're kind of similar every once in a while. We get like really, like if we argue, it's going to be loud. Mm. Like it'll be pretty yeah. loud. Yeah, that's true. You know. But I also, it's hard to, I've tried to explain this before to people that like, didn't grow up similarly to us or maybe gr didn't grow up with like an immigrant household i think yelling is just kind of a part of that maybe yeah. not but that's my experience and i've had friends or you know more than friends that i've been with in the past like date like people that i've dated in the past and they just don't understand like they'll have a situation like us like i don't know i'm just like and you, they yell at each other and like you yell, and they take it so personal and like, can't get over it. And I'm like, we're never going to, this isn't going to yeah. work out because I can work. get over it in two seconds. And you're like still hung up on some shit that I said when I was mad and hungry. That's not fair. No. And no. it's just not, it's not like my vibe. What is funny though now is I feel like your mom operates as if you guys don't scream and yell at each other. Because when you do get loud and scream, your mom's just like, oh No, my that's my mom's game. Goodness. In front of other people. And I'm like, oh, this must be like the only time Natasha's done this. But then I'm like, wait, no, I've actually witnessed this like six, seven, eight, nine, ten times now. But it's really interesting. No, my mom is like, she, she's such a golden retriever. She, when everyone else is around, she gives you like this happy-go-lucky, like she's never had a bad moment in her life. She's never screamed. She's never gotten mad. Mm -hmm. But I see that, that side of her. Yeah when we're alone so she won't do it in front of you like she'll be like shocked and be like this is not the woman i raised and i'm like who, who why do you think i'm like this like who yeah. do you think taught me how to cut like this like it's so much like my dad me. my dad's yeah. that way like he he does not acknowledge how it actually was so now i added almost an entire jar of pink salt because the herbs to the salt ratio is the most important thing. I did not measure that. I eyed it, but it's going to work. I really feel it's like four or five to one in terms of your salt to aromatic ratio when doing a dry spice mix like this. Okay. And then like just a touch of white pepper because white pepper really goes so fucking far. Mix this up. But look, that's it. That's your spice rub. If you made a barbecue spice rub, that's it. Julius, to confirm for the viewers how you feel, smell. Mm. Delish. He said, mmm, right? Mm. And it, that was a deep mmm. Yeah, it was like mmm. Just like slightly sensual. Slightly. Notes of comfort, I think you could denote from that. I feel like mm. Julius, Julius like that. So if you guys trust Julius, which I do, it's delicious. It's, mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, would you like mm -hmm. to smell it, babe? Let's, let's I would love to smell. Yeah. I feel let's like now my reaction is going to be underwhelming. That's nice. Oh, oh, I thought oh, it was going to make me nice. sneeze. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I had a delayed yeah. reaction. Let's, uh, I was like, wow, I might when, sneeze. This is really good, though. When our guest comes, we'll also give him a chance to take a whiff. So we'll see then. 
I can see what you're saying though about like the calamari. Yeah, salt it and pepper smells, squid. Yeah. yeah, it smells how I imagine. Like I remember that tasting. Mm -hmm. That's so good. I haven't had just like takeout Chinese food that's not super authentic. Just like American Chinese. Yeah. That I feel like you can get. It's better on the East Coast. Yeah, like old Cantonese that? Chinese food. Yeah, where you get like the salt and pepper calamari, um, yep. beef and broccoli, general sao, yep. lo mein. Also, why can't you get a crab rangoon in LA? Yo, crab rangoon is such an ancient dish. I feel like you got to be like at a Chinese restaurant in like Honolulu or Boston to get it. Yeah, you know? I feel like it's a Boston thing, but I didn't know that. Yeah. It's almost like when you say crab rangoon at a restaurant now, it's like you said a racial epithet. Maybe. You know what I mean? It's like crab rangoon, you know? <laughs> okay, I didn't know it was like hey, fucked up. Crab, no, it's not fucked up. <laughs> I'm just like, I think people feel like it's a crab rangoon. Crab Why rangoons are that? fucking amazing. Yeah, like, it's it's fucking... one of the best things I've ever eaten in my life. Okay, a fried wonton with like crab and cream cheese inside. That's yeah. delicious. Why wouldn't you want that? Yeah, it's, it's a gnarly dish. But, uh, but it was funny. Like people have asked me that. They're like, what? oh, do you have crab rangoons? Or like asking me like- Like at the crib? No. <laughs> the They're crib. like, since you married a Chinaman, no, you no, got no. crab rangoons. <laughs> no. like, is he the plug no, for I the think rangoons? It was, it was someone was like in town visiting us or something and we were eating Chinese food and I was like, all right, I'll bring you something home. Like they were landing. It might have yeah. been my cousin. They were oh like landing God. late at like 10 p.m. And I was like, all right, we're going to go to dinner. I'll just bring whatever home. What do you want? And they were yeah. like, crab rangoons. And I was like, they like, don't have that here. Like, I yeah. can't get that for you, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> crab is. rangoon got iced out of menus. It wasn't like classy yeah. enough. They like took it off. But Well, I like it. Really, bring back crab rangoon. I fuck with crab rangoon. Me too. It's naughty. Especially if you get real nasty and dip it in like duck sauce. Yeah. Or even the mustard. Yeah. Oh, this is news. There was a there's a restaurant where I grew up and it's called Kowloon. And it's like the local Chinese food place. You went there with me. Yeah. Um but everyone goes there. It's if you you like grew up in this town, you've been there a million times. It's like a fixture in everyone's life. It's closing and they're doing a documentary on it. Oh wow. Which I find interesting. Amazing. It's definitely like a watering hole for the local alcoholics. And like just people that have never moved on. No hate, no shade. Yeah, I remember going to your neighborhood and everyone at night was like, should we go to Kowloon? Should we go to Kowloon? And I was like, that's the move. Yo, this is dope. This is like your China chalet it is. in a Boston beach town. This yeah. is fire. It's Kowloon. Like you pull up there on a Friday night, you get a Mai Tai and you get some crab rangers. Yeah. If your party <laughs> spot in your town is a Chinese tiki vibe, I fuck with your town. I yeah. fuck with it. Um, this is the dressing for our copycat fake Erewhon uh, kale white bean salad, right? This is, this is what I do at home, okay? About two tablespoons of tahini here, all right? Get that tahini in there. Speaking of the mustard, I'm going to use a little bit of hot Chinese mustard, all right? Ooh. I think the signature, bless Gosh, you, babe. Sorry, thank you. The signature of our kind of like stepped up uh, salad here is that I add a little bit of the Chinese mustard, just that much, all right? And then, because it's very spicy and hot sensation. And then I also add Zab's hot honey. I think the hot honey sets it off. So here we go. Sesame tahini, Chinese mustard, yuzu ponzu, mm. all right? Nice bit of yuzu ponzu. I'd say that's like two and a half ounces. Um, lemon, can you throw me a lemon, babe? Absolutely. Thank you. Tamari for the gluten-free homies. Shouts to my gluten-free soldier out there. You know who you are. I'm not going to put you on blast. You're recovering from hemorrhoids right now. Salute you, my G. Salute. <laughs> Thank you. I hope he sees this. I'm not going to tell him I did it, but I hope he just sees it and he knows. He's in all of our hearts. Babe, would you like to say a prayer for the homie with hemorrhoids? 
You know, I would because I've been reading about pregnancy and like what can happen to you. And hemorrhoids is a very real thing for pregnant women. So, so you stand aside with him too. I don't have hemorrhoids. Like, and I just, I can't even imagine. That's one of the things that like I'll wake up at three in the morning and I have to pee and then I'll think about what if that happened to me and I'll, I like won't be able to go back to sleep. Yeah. But you know, it happens to people and that's okay. It's very normal. If you have hemorrhoids, you're in our hearts. You're in We're our thinking hearts. thinking of you. We love you. Get well and soon, homie. Yeah. Enjoy your bland diet. No <laughs> spice. No Damn. spice. Julius, have you ever had hemorrhoids? Are you lying? No. For sure, never. I read in a movie, it feels like acorns up your butt. Oh my god. <laughs> Acorns up your butt. A new thing is called carpool. Carpool. Oh. I want to watch this. I'm scared. I'm scared of like, I just, there's things that can happen to you in your body that is horrifying. Garlic. All right. We're doing garlic paste. Somebody is calling. Yes. Oh, it's just uncouth. Do you know what I mean? Like we're taping the pod. So uncouth. <laughs> Who would call while we're taping Seriously. the pod? If you don't know, just assume. Just assume we're the pod busy. is being taped. Don't hit my line. There's three things usually going on in this house. People fornicating, people potting, or people picking up dog shit. Yeah. There's That's, other things too. There is. There Those is. are the three Those main. Those are the three main things happening yeah. in the crib. I would say honestly a fourth is like... Someone's taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you can't leave that out. If we're going to do like pillars of, <laughs> of what's going on in here. That would be me. Yeah. That would be me. Yeah. It does take me like close to 45 minutes to drop one. I like that though. It's like leisure. Yeah. Like it, it's an activity for you. He enjoys it. He takes his time. I feel yeah. like every time you take a shit, I learn something. Because oh. you send me like an article, <laughs> like just like thirty Instagram posts, like my DM blows up. I'm like, oh, Eddie's taking a shit. This or I'll is I'll wake true. up at like I'll wake up at like four in the morning, and you'll have sent me like thirty posts from two in the morning, and I'm like, oh, he took a shit at two. From the library of IBS, the yeah. IBS library. It's, you know, it's so dense. That I library is so dense. I get off the toilet and I'm like, oh, that was nice. I look down, I'm like. Bro, you just sent her seven articles, like seven articles. That's and you'll follow up with me too. Like, it's not like yeah. he sends me oh. these articles and doesn't follow up. He'd be like, so did you read it? I'm not like, like checking, babe. What? I'm not like checking if you <laughs> no, read no, 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 it. No, 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 I'm more just like, No, no, he's not checking, but he definitely wants to like talk about it. And I'm like, you sent that to me at three in the morning. It is seven. Like, I have not had the time to, to read that yet, but I will check back in with you later. Like, so we'll let you know. All right, so here we go. Mm. Kale, avocado, we're going to throw in sunflower seeds here. I use the roasted and the salted. Mm. I like to be liberal with the sun. I honestly, more sunflower, you honestly, can't even go wrong. Honestly, yeah, they're not bad for you. It's delicious. Little Murray's shredded Parmigiano Reggiano, all right? That Murray's cheese. Hot. You know what? I'm even gonna throw in a little bit of this, this here. Yeah, more do that. More grated Reggiano, all right? Ah. Mm, a grated Reggiano, sexy, all right? Yeah, see, see, Ina Garden would have gotten a utensil to do that, but sometimes you know it's cool to watch a show where they just use the top of a plastic lid. We were talking about Ina Garden last night, and. Um, we were, because he asked me, like, if you could eat anyone's food in the world, who would it be? And I said, Ina Garden. And she then corrected made, herself. I was offended at first. I was like, wow, you didn't say me. But she corrected. She was like, well, not I eat me. your food all the time and I do eat it whenever I want. So it's kind of a given. Yeah. But whatever, we said her. And then Eddie made a comparison. He said, well, we're kind of like Ina Garten. And I was like, no. And he made the best observation. You said, Ina Garten was there when America was great and America at its peak and we're America at its worst. 
and at the fringe. We and are. honestly, I agree. So look, the salad's here. Our guest is here. The dressing's going in. We are at the worst period of American history. We want to go back to the Ina Garten times, right? We but do. Look at this salad. My Jesus piece. Like, damn. Damn, son. Julius was looking at it. He'd be, God damn. God damn it. Ugh, I live for the Julius. God damn it. Because if I don't get it, then I feel like I really didn't put my foot in the dish. So, Julius, did we get it today? The goddamn seal of approval. Maybe I gotta break the chicken out. Yeah. Okay. The chicken's gonna set it off. Julius is waiting for the chicken. We'll, we'll wait for the chicken to do the goddamn. But the salad is fire, I'm telling you. Oh, look at that. Look at this sexy ass salad. Damn. So many sunflower seeds. I got some kind of poison in. <laughs> Remember Three Six Mafia? I got so many shrimp. I got iodine poison in. I got so many sunflower seeds. I like that. Oh, yum. I like the iodine. Poisoning reference. We love we love a three six mafia shout out. Mostly so anytime. as we wait for this chicken, Julius will mic up Edison. Yeah. And then, and then you guys will all get to enjoy this food. Yup. Yeah. We ready? I'm chilling, man. I made my mom's famous salt and pepper roasted chicken and salad for you today. So we got this, Shout look at this beautiful moms. salad. Shout out moms. Yes. Yeah. Shout out. Julius. I was just with you saying, uh, fuck, I forgot to buy it for you. I was going to buy this apple cedar, you know that? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so cedar. funny. I was like, yo, man. So good. I love apple oh, cedar. Oh. oh, yeah. And this is Julius, by the way. Julius Edison. Oh, yeah. Julius is our guy. Baby, I thought that was another amazing news segment from you. So much good news happening right now. The Tim Robinson news, phenomenal. You get that? You get that? Huh? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I don't even remember when I was last here, man. I don't even know if it was like last week or if it was like I think a month ago. Three, three weeks ago. Three yeah, weeks ago. almost a month. Right before I went to London. Oh, yeah, how was that? Amazing, bro. One of my homies met you and texted me about it. I forgot who it was. Oh, really? You know, I just met. Oh, Hung. Oh, you know Hung. Lung Dan. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like Lung him. Dan. That's my guy. Yeah. You good friends with him? Well, I, I met him not not too long ago. Yeah. And uh, you know, because he's Asian, you know me, man. I like the Asians. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So he was like, yo, I really want to work with you, man. You know? Oh, like, work. Hey, man, you know, I'm down to put on young talent, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, during our Fashion Week show in Shanghai, um, he's got a couple looks in there. Oh, nice. nice, man. Did you travel with him too or no? No. Do I? No, right? Yeah. I didn't this time. Um, I just didn't want to get, like, jet lag and sick. I get it. And like right now, I feel like my immune system is so fucked. No, because the strains of whatever the sicknesses are out there, Bro. they're different. Like, yeah. Like yeah. country by country, even maybe state by state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and like right gnarly. now, I can't take shit. Like I can't take flu medicine or anything. Yeah. So I was like, if I get sick, I'm fucked. Like I can't take Tamiflu or like yeah. NyQuil. But in the future, I prefer she travel with me. Does Shupe travel with you? A lot, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like, you know, on those four-day trips, no. Yeah. yeah. Just because, like, she, unless it's like a place she really want to go. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. But for her too, it's like, nah, for four days, nah, dude. You know? Yeah, and I'm just like, my my brain is like, I'm like, you go work, and I'll hold it down here and like get us ready for like baby. Yeah, but we need shit, you guys next you know? to us sometimes, you know? No, for sure. We need you guys. I mean, I prefer it. I don't really like, like this was, this was too much. Like this time he, you were gone yeah. for 12 days and I was like, okay, this is a little too long. Yeah. All right. 
fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh. This is going to be amazing. Oh, these are the seasonings for Edison to smell. Oh, yes. I love it. We have seasonings yeah. for you to smell. Yeah, bro, you're going to like the pot because we just like goofy oh, and fucking good. being... You know, I don't give a shit what we do, man. You we're know? just chilling, honestly. There's yeah, no I don't format. Um, where would you want me to be seated? Which side? You here. All right. All right. All right. Should we move down? Our angles are good. I'm just gonna. Sick. Are you gonna the right yeah, I'll reveal the chicken right there. Chicken. Unless you want me to reveal on the table is fly too. Oh, you could like. Uh... Or no, I'll reveal the chicken there and cut it there. Yeah, and then we'll move this cam. Yeah. Almost ready for the chicken reveal. Okay. It's I'm almost so time. Chicken reveal. You want me to get bowls, babe, for yeah. salad? Yeah. Or... With anything? No, no, no. No, no totally you're good. good. Just chill. Yeah. Bowls. Oh, yeah, plates. Plates. We'll do plates for the chicken and salad. Okay. Amazing. Plates. Yeah, man. Roasted. So you was in London? Yeah, I really liked it a lot over there. I don't mind London at all, man. I love it. I used to hate it when I was younger. I thought it was like snobby and bullshit, you know what I mean? And then now we go and you're like, oh, these motherfuckers cultured. I know. <laughs> yeah. They're better than America. That's what we were talking about. We were like, damn, like, do we fuck with London? Like, are we? London's pretty dope. Are we about to yeah. be like Londoners? London is pretty dope. London is pretty dope. Do you have a clot out there? No, we don't, no. That's uh, one of the one of the things we're talking about expanding because you know obviously yeah. London is a Chinese heavy yeah. uh, you know city yeah. right you know so obviously that in San Francisco and um, where else Tokyo. Yo, before we start, curious, what do what would you want to talk about? Because there's always interesting stuff with you, but what's out of bounds and what do you want to talk about before I, we start? I don't really give a shit, man. We can talk really? about whatever. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. Right. Let's see here. Oh, I mean, yes, there is, man. Like yeah. China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know, politics in China, man. That's, yeah. There's We're no way. We're not gonna talk about China. We're not gonna talk I about. I mean, your for you top. too, bro. Like yeah. you know, you know, we, we talk about China. We're talking about, about Taiwan and China. No, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No. We were not. I'd be like, yo, you know what? My wife want me to leave. <laughs> yeah, I was like, we're not gonna refer to your laptop or China. You know? No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It's okay. Every other, every other. I mean, other thing I don't mind so much, but the 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 China shit, I definitely mind. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. But no, nah, this is. Have you ever been to China? No, I yeah. haven't. Okay. I've been to Asia, uh, Japan, Thailand. I think that's it. I was just back in China, man. Okay. I'm ready whenever you are, Julius. You ready? I mean. If you've been in Japan, it's oh the well. Best let me ask you guys. Nation. That's why I was like in love with it. You don't need another place, yeah. to be honest with you. Do you guys like a chicken more well done or more like? I like it done the way that you think is good, bro. Yeah. What do you want, babe? Your call. Plumper, juicier, a little, little more well. Well, because she's. I like it. I just can't have it like super rare right yeah, now yeah. because of baby. Yeah. So it's chicken too. I will wait five minutes. Yeah. We'll wait. We'll wait five minutes. You know, I'll hit the ball. Typically, I'm like very juicy, but yeah. you know. Yeah, more well done is My good sacrifice right now. Yeah. This is a little more well done. When do you do? September 11th. Oh, yeah, that's right. Very American of me. You know, shout yeah. out to my country. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, but it's like rapidly approaching. It's crazy how fast it goes by. I'm still in the mindset of You're like, like what, four, four months out? Pretty much, yeah. No, it's June. Three, three months. June, three months. July, August. Yo, you're three months out. Yeah. That's 12 weeks. I know. Wow. I know. You don't look like you're at that stage right now. I know. You... But that's the trip. That's what's tripping me out is because I feel like, like I you envisioned be, myself yeah, you should be being like, yeah. like extraordinarily pregnant by now. And I think Shupe it's was the same. hard to like, yeah. Shupe was the same. And it's hard to put Me two mentally, things together exactly. mentally. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, the baby's coming, but it's funny because even sometimes I'll go shopping and I'll be like, oh, can I get this in a bigger size? And they're like, this one fits you though. And I'm like, no, I'm pregnant. I'm going to grow. And they're like, yeah. oh. Yeah. And I feel like they don't believe me. <laughs> Like, I swear to God. Like, bitch, I told you to give me the biggest yeah, size. I'm like, can I have the large? I don't want to like, have a talk about this I shit. Need? You know what I mean? Be yeah, like, I'm like, yo, do you want to burn? Something I just did outside. But okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to come out. You want to hit this? I'm going to have a cigarette, though. 
We at work. We'll just smoke this way. Yeah, it's a smoke break. Thank you for all the gifts, man. I know. Thank you. You're the best. So, yeah, these are fly. So you're in 53 stores? 53,000. 53,000. That's what I meant. I'm like, <laughs> no, she said cool. 53. Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> like everything, everything I say, like I doesn't, yeah, they 20% say, they, of it doesn't they say, make sense. They say the, the, the memory is shot too. Shot. Yeah. yeah right. Shot. Yeah. Like I'll be talking about something. I'm using every last brain cell to put together Come a on, sentence and I swear to god <laughs> I swear to god every last singular brain cell I have <laughs> like I'm like you gotta I, hold a manual you're no, like, like all you right page truly, four like, you could just like <laughs> hit a button and I'm like I just deactivate and like go downstairs and go to sleep <laughs> and I don't use my brain it's great damn this shit looking fire oh I'm excited <sighs> have you ever had the kale white bean salad at Erewhon no oh, for sure you go to Erewhon don't you yeah yeah, this you is, know, I, I I this is the remix. No, um, I don't know if I like it or not because I ain't had it. But oh, this is the this is the remix. Yep, a little hot Chinese mustard. Yeah, this is like yuzu. if it was actually good. If yeah. they weren't like trying to um, short you. Yes, um, I feel like the okay. air one shit is good. No, it's, it's great. just like one step. It's it's kind of good. It's one step from being real good. Yeah, but they charge the price like of it it's being the best. real good yeah yeah they charge the best price for something that's good but not even real good yeah but people just bug out because la yo edison oh yo we should welcome our guests everybody put your oven mitts on and give a round of applause to our guest edison chen yeah. here we are, here we are. in the flesh many years <laughs> i met this guy I still remember where i met him that's when you know someone made an impression on you i met edison at the knicks nets game the first ever Knicks Nets game I ran into you in the hallway yeah and you offered me Zans and I was like my man <laughs> we gonna be cool I was Wait, so mad I was right. so Come mad on. that day because I'm a Knicks fan yeah who, I was are, you like, who are you for? there for the Knicks That's or the Nets question. because you're like really quick to be like we're gonna be best here days. one thing is because he like, was Knicks team Zan nuts? over the okay. it, more, even okay. more than the Knicks is he was team okay. Zanny I was like <laughs> my man out my man you know but yeah are you Knicks or Nets bro I'm definitely a Knicks fan. Hell yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I That's still, I still, it's about. funny because I always talk to like friends and stuff and I'm always like, yo, the New Jersey Nets, you know, and they'll yeah, be like, yo, they're, they're like, the Brooklyn no, Nets the Brooklyn now. Nets. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Yo, the Nets is a fake team, bro. That's a Quidditch team. There's, there's no such thing as the Brooklyn Nets. You can't be like, like the Knicks is all of New York, right? Mm -hmm. We represent all of New York, like not just the boroughs, upstate, New York. You can't mm -hmm. just pop up under our nose and be like, we're the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I'm married to you. Like another dude can't pop up and be like, I'm Tuesday. Yeah, but, yeah. but I'd be like, nah, son, you're dead. But yeah. it's you like, just got OJ. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but, but, but it's almost like like the person that's visiting town, they can't get the Knicks tickets, so they go and watch the Nets. That is yeah. right. You feel me? And the Nets it was were just like gentrification team. They were like, how do we gentrify Brooklyn? But the, more? but when Barclays opened, it was like, holy shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, holy shit. But that's shit. what I mean. They was and like the insane. team that filled it, yeah. you're like, oh God. But no. you guys remember this, and like, what for so many years, for maybe 20, 30 years, Brooklyn was just this brand that was like so ill yeah. and untouchable. And people knew that if you like weren't from Brooklyn, maybe don't wear like Brooklyn shit, mm -hmm. unless you're like in Paris or London repping, cool. <laughs> yeah. But the Nets, I know for sure, became popular because they were the one way for people to rock Brooklyn shit and be like, yeah, Brooklyn in the house. Mm. And I was like, that, that's not real. Yeah, y'all don't even live there. Y'all mm. don't even live there. That shit was fake. Knicks. Yeah. That's why I got upset. Heartbreaker though this season, right? Yep. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, we, you, you guys got far. Like I'm no, not I like a. Uh, I was like this. Is, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not like a Knicks diehard fan, but yeah. you know, if I had to choose between the Nets and the Knicks, it's definitely the Knicks. Knicks for right? sure. The for Knicks sure. are just sexier. For sure. I wish you guys made a deeper run because I'm, I'm definitely not a Celtics fan. No. Damn. No, not a Celtics fan. Shots Damn, shot to the heart. I don't you care. I'm, just, I'm from Boston, but I, I don't care. I would rather see... I'm happy it's the Heat. Mm. Was it the Heat? Yeah, yeah. Celtics? The heat. Yeah. 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 The Heat are a better team. You know what? The I'm, Heat are I'm sexier. Gonna to, I'm going to give it to the Heat. 
you destiny, know, bro. Ended our yeah. year, ended my season. You know, I I really didn't take it that bad though, babe. No, you because didn't. like this wasn't like a bitch made team that accidentally beat the Knicks. They uncled the Knicks. Like mm. the yeah. only two dudes on the Knicks, well, three dudes on the Knicks that could stand tall is Brunson, Grimes, and I say Mitchell Robinson. They mm. did their thing. Uh, I was gonna be like, man, is he gonna say Randall? Because nope. if he says Randall, nope. I'm gonna have to no, be like, no what? Julius Randall nope. in this house. It's uh, very anti Randall. This is an anti Julius Randall crowd. Yeah. Mm. For sure. He's a great husband and a great man in the community. Terrible basketball. No player. one has more Birkins than his girl. Yeah, his and girl it doesn't is taken make care sense. Because I'm like, how? I don't That's know. dope. It's cool. But that's why his girl, too, like, as soon as the season ended, you saw they were doing Taco Tuesday night and everything. I'm like, yo. This is not what your man needs. You, he needs a wife that just yeah. feeds him rocks in the off season. He right needs now. to go back in the Here's lab. Just rock soup. <laughs> I boiled a stone mm. in clear water. He needs to be drinking like electrolytes, and that's nah. Right. But it, I don't soup. think I don't think it's the look. And I, look, I, I'm a deep NBA fanish kind of on mm -hmm. and off. I'd say. But I don't think it's the work ethic. I think it's the mentality and 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 how he play on court. Yes. You feel me? He's selfish. He's yeah, he's a little, a yeah, player. he's a, yeah, uh, nah. Woo. He wants it to be like I agree with his you, show, Edison. but he's not good enough for that. Yeah, because he's like fit, oh, he's no. good, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's not that injury he, prone, he kind of, but not really. No. He wants to be the man. And exactly. Like, you can be the man, but Just you have to the, back it up. Exactly, or pass the rock. Yeah, like, an yeah assist move is, the rock, an assist, an assist in a rebound is still worth something. Yeah. yeah. He never moves the rock. Who's what? like if you, when you're a diehard and you're in it? I'm just like, a Laker fan, just because okay. I'm here. You know, yeah, like yeah. Uh, it's the easiest. Fair enough. Easiest thing. You see this chicken, B. You see this chicken. This is a crispy neck. Yeah, that chicken looks good. Oh, this looks amazing. Wow. This chicken is coming off now. Bang oh, bang. This chicken up. Oh, oh, look at that Damn. juicy ass chicken. Ooh. Oh, dripping. Hot chicken, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Most chefs will be like, yo, you got to let this rest, which you should let the juices run and things like that. But we're taping a pod and we're hungry. So I'm cutting. Look at this chicken. Look at this chicken beat. Oh, crispy skin. Look at all the juice in this chicken. Bang. Mm. This is really, this is beautiful. I have to marvel at our work, guys. So, Edison, oh, did we give him a whiff of the seasoning? Let's oh get his God, reaction nice. of the seasonings. Smell this. So this is the seasoning give us your mix. Thoughts. Yummy. Yummy, okay. Yeah, okay. My, wife, okay. Uh, my wife would love this shit. Yeah. It's just like uh, Chinese spices, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I'm good with it. Are you good Delish. with it? I love it. I think it's great. Oh. I mean, no lie though. When I first met my wife, yup. Damn, I, this chicken's going I, I fucking been a little serious arc. Yo, this shit is dripping I mean, out. Because I, yeah, because I had never yo, kind of ventured yo, there. Really? <laughs> yeah. Siberia. So she like brought you a little bit deeper into like. Oh, way deep. Oh, wow. Yeah, way deep. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Especially I into the cuisine. Button on this chicken, wow. man. Shit, this chicken's a squirter. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, juicy chicken. Yeah, look at this bang, chicken. Bang, bang. Oh, damn, Ma. Oh. You said, oh, damn, Ma. Damn. You ruining my sheets. Yeah, oh, I was just no. about to say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to, yo, the sheets. <laughs> the sheets are done. Look, it's usually me dripping when we get up, you know? No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. Oh I'm fucking kidding. <laughs> Listen. Either or. Oh man, this chicken's looking good. All right. Here's a thigh piece here. Edison, do you be cooking at home? Yeah, I cook yeah. Uh, on and off. Not not a lot, lot, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I cook. Do you do you do the cooking at home or wifey or somebody else? I think usually we split it. Like so, mm -hmm. she does the vegetables and I do like the whatever yeah. the main dish is supposed to be. Oh, that's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. So we kind of, yeah. you know. That's fly. Yeah, she does the baking. Yeah, he cooks, I bake. Yup. So we'll just have like a baked good. Yeah. I'm like, Same here. thing. Yeah. I'll, mm. I'll present you with something sweet. Yeah. 
I mean, you can bake vegetables and stuff too. And oh, I yeah. can't yeah. bake. It works out perfect because I'm a non bacon ass fool. Yeah. I just cook. I could barbecue. I could cook anything, but baking's not for me because you got to like measure and like plan ahead. And yeah. It's interesting. I think the thing with you, it's like I could cook, but you're going to do it at such a higher level than me, anyways. So I'm just like, I'll let you do it. Yeah, my knowledge of cooking is literally like I have to I have to follow a recipe. You make a great Caesar salad. Yeah, I can make a salad. That's about it. That's still I mean, that's cooking. still cook, that's still. It's, yeah, I can assemble. Yeah. I think I assemble well. Yeah. I follow recipes well. Look, these dudes at sandwich natural. shops, they just assembling too. You know what I mean? No, for sure. Yeah. Oh, this chicken. Sorry, it's taking a second, guys. No, I'm like this being is fine. all fucking high and awkward right now. I'm like, oh, just, like, the chicken. Like, we're just watching you carve this chicken. Yeah. Good, good things take time, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm so way. high and horny for this chicken right now. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Should we give you five minutes with it? Let me take this back. chicken right quick. Take a break. <laughs> yeah. Eddie needs a break. Like, listen, I'm happy to pass <laughs> off any responsibilities that would be on me to that chicken. Oh, oh, yeah. We should, yo, me and Edison is also M88 fam. Our managers was in the house today. Oh, we're? Oh, yeah, they were yeah. all over here today for a little breakfast. You know, I was going to uh, cook for here? them. Phil, Gerald. Uh, Maya. Maya and Gerald. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we cool. love them. Cool. What's yeah. up, what's up? Shouts. Yep. Yeah. Shouts, shouts. They all say hi, you know. What the fuck am I? I'm totally ruining this chicken. I totally know how to carve chicken. Julius, we got too high during the break, man. I'm fucking wiling out on this chick. What am I doing? I'm not even on the right side. I'm getting all crazy. Honestly, it's fine because I know nothing about it. So to me, it looks like you're doing an amazing job. I'm doing a terrible job on this one. The last you're one doing I was incredible. great. But I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? I'm just going to hack like I usually do instead of trying to be all like fucking cool. It looks stunning. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Saved it. Yep. We gonna be able to finish that whole chicken shit. Yeah. Probably. Oh my, oh my god. Probably, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna fuck this up. You got a fat man and a pregnant woman in the house. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm like, we're eating for like four right now. Yeah. <laughs> Just our our side of the table <laughs> will fuck it up for sure. <laughs> don't worry, Edison. All right. We got you. Mm. Just don't want to waste food, you know? No, we no. never waste food in this house. <clears throat> oh, damn. Ooh. Mom's salt and white pepper chicken. Bang, 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 bang. Um, do you? Should we keep this here, right? Should I make some room for yeah, it right here? Yeah, let's make some room. Oh, here, look at this. <laughs> this, is, this is where we keep our mic. Yeah, this is our <laughs> mic, holding mic holder, holder now. Word. Yeah. New edition. Nice. And then uh, let me get some chili oil. Just yeah. Nice. Amazing. Amazing, babe. Thank you. Of course. Yo, Maz here is like a one-man wrecking crew, he man. He is. Julius is the best. I like this, like three down. of him, like right now. I'm like, octopus. Like, what the fuck? Direct three of this dude, man. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Julius There would be all. no show without he Julius. Wants three Shouts to Julius, not audio. Randall, right? Yeah. Shouts to Julius, not <laughs> Randall. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. I right. love that. Do you have any particular oh, piece you, you want? Man. Wonderful. Edison, do you want a leg? I like breast. some breasts, please. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Gosh, He's yeah. a titty man. Only I titties. Only, only real titties, though. Oh, okay. No fake titties. No fake titties. Damn, uh, all right. No, I mean, especially for, only when, her especially, for me. No, especially when you're eating chicken, right? Mm -hmm. No, for sure. Yeah. Real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't yeah, want yeah, any yeah, of that yeah. GMO fucking. I see what you're talking about. Not GMO titty. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. Here's chilies. Oh my god, I'm excited. For Both this. Logan Ma brand. We love it. Bang bang. Yup. Here, you want some chili? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, babe. Of course. Like Tim Robinson, I like it hot. Do you know Tim Robinson? Uh, actor? Comedian. He's a yeah, comedian. Yeah, comedian, right? Um, do you ever watch that shit. show on Netflix? Oh, I think you should leave. No. You gotta watch it. I think you should leave. Mm hmm. Chicken's perfect, babe. Mmm. All right. That chicken hit. Damn. Julius, I gotta give you a piece right now. I gotta give you a piece. Mmm. Mmm. She's good. Bro, go 
with the wings, Julius. Mm. Oh, I mean, I ain't had the air one one of this, but this shit good. <laughs> yeah, the salad's good too, right? Mm. So you guys have like, mm. um, obviously like where you're having the kid and everything already all thought out. Yeah. Right. All right. We're having the kid here. We have it like we have our plan, but like I said, it's weird because we're. I think it's that stage where it's obviously very real <laughs> and it's happening. And I don't know if you guys went through this with your yeah. first. Like, I feel like when it happens, we're j we're. I don't know. There's something in your brain where you just don't. Doesn't feel real. Like it's a it's con it's a concept right now. Mm -hmm. I've spent the last two months not working just to be with her. Mm -hmm. Um, one day, we're at this restaurant that I hate, um, called <laughs> Republic or some shit like that. Did you say that I hate? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> her parents were in town, obviously, right? Mm hmm We're sitting there, we're ordered, and then her water broke. Whoa! In the restaurant, bro. Yeah. And you and don't then, like the restaurant. Holy no, I told the, I told the guy, I was like, I'm sorry, man, but we have to leave now. Mm -hmm. I can pay for the check, but my wife's water just broke. And he's like, he's like this, he's like this. <laughs> he looked. <laughs> Like, why would you check? Like, like what the fuck, man? Like, like, I'm lying right yeah, here. It's like, like a way of saying it, too, right? Water doesn't actually yeah. flood the floor. No, yeah, and, and um, a little bit. A little bit. Oh, it like, depends on who. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Some what, people what, like, chicken's water broke. For yeah. sure. <laughs> and um, funny shit is, is that we went home. And we we're waiting for like the contractions and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they wasn't coming. And we had tickets to watch Old Man Wolverine. You remember oh. that? Like Wolverine, yeah. like the last, I forgot it was a Logan or whatever it was mm -hmm. called, right? And we were like literally thinking like, maybe we should just go watch this movie. Why not? <laughs> Yo, you're so wow. You love movies. He has a group chat where he's always giving, he buys out theaters so everybody yeah. can go watch. Yeah. Oh wait, that's, yeah. you're like mm -hmm. the best version of AMC Stubbs. Yeah. yeah. You're like, I'll just buy the theater for yeah. you guys. Edison's the real gold house. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he's just got a group chat where he buys out theaters. They come watch this movie. Yeah. But I'm like, now there's a whole nother context. Yo, if her water broke, I would, I couldn't think about no Wolverine, bro. You crazy. <laughs> I'm <laughs> telling you. Really a maniac. Just thinking back, it was like crazy to even think about, yeah. like even asking her, like, yeah, well, you no, still want to go watch Well, no, you have time. Yeah. You have like time. Like, I pray that I have no time. I pray that it's like, this baby's coming out like an hour. Some women, they're like, they'll tell you stay home. They're like, don't come yeah, to the, the hospital yet. Or no you go and they'll tell you to go home. Yeah, they'll be like, you need to wait until yeah, they're like, come this. come back in five hours, yeah. and you're like, when you're six minutes LB. apart, you know what I mean? You're like, yeah, what do you do you for five hours? I go see Wolverine. If I if I was in, in enough, not in that much pain, yeah, Damn. I'd be like, yeah, let's watch a movie or like go to McDonald's or something. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. In the movies, you always just see them. My water broke, and then they're in the hospital in the next scene. Yeah. 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 It, it's not really like that. <laughs> I think it's all different for everyone. I gotta read the book. Were you shook when it was happening? Like when she went into labor and then you were at the hospital and like the baby was coming out? I was were shook. you in the room? I was shook. Yeah, I was mm -hmm. in the room. Um, I was shook because, um, you know, I, I don't know if your doctors asked you, but they have this thing where it's like, they give you an IV and it's a painkiller, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're like, yo, do you want it? And my, my, my wife's like, she doesn't like taking pills. She doesn't like, you know, take, mm -hmm. like she likes to heal naturally. You yeah. know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. So she's like, no, I don't want that, right? So we're there, chilling, yeah. right? A little into it, she's like, give me that shit right now. I'm like, right now, yeah. right? And she, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. like exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Damn, and man. then we gave her the thing, and then she's like, <sighs> like, like, yeah. like the priest had just came. And like, like, it just <laughs> calmed you. I'm the I same. I can tell you. <laughs> Zans. Yeah, yeah. Literally. <laughs> it was crazy. I'm the same. I never, in like my normal life, I never want to take anything. I, I never want to take, take like it. Advil. And this is when they asked me my plan, I was like, all the med all the meds yeah. earliest possible <laughs> I, I was like it, the earliest moment you can give me the meds i want them mm. i don't want to feel shit serious some women it's too late you Why? get there and they're like we can't give you anything it's too late you have to just do this now the funny part though is like she's a tough chick there's one of the things i really get along with her on but pregnant like obviously i would be i would be shook too but she's just being it's it's like i see another side of her that's like yo this is something i'm scared of do you know what i mean i think that's the whole fatherhood motherhood pregnancy thing is like 
Yo, we could all be fucking fake tough guys forever, but this is some shit you're actually gonna be scared of. It's some precious many, shit. Many, many I mean, ways. man, even there being a father, like ways, alone, bro. birthing, the moments. Mm -hmm. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. I was, I was bugged out. I had like a stack of cash on me, like just a big bag of cash, mm -hmm. just in case like anything happened. Yeah. <laughs> this is the funniest shit, right? So. So we get to the, to the, you know, we book pre-booked. We said, hey, this day your doctor arranges it, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We get to the hospital and they're like, hey, do you want this room or this room? I'm like, whatever the best room is, just give it to me, man. Yeah. Just yeah. give it to me. And they're like, oh, okay. Um, we have one available. It's a little extra. How would you like to pay? And I was like, you know, because I had the bag of cash. The duffel bag. I was like, I'll pay you cash. And they're like, they're, like, hold, they're like, hold on, right? And they come back with three nurses, right? And they're like, we're going to give you the 15% cash discount and then they stop three nurses stop whatever they was doing and counting my cash yeah, that's <laughs> i crazy. wish i took a picture Wait, of like washing money i was like in the you hospital? turn a fucking no, i don't know no, that's not what i said america 15 percent cash discount is like yo you washing money they're like thank you because we broke 30 off this bro i don't know if we should should we yeah. get cash out thank you so yo, much cash. we're getting cash out bro <laughs> you putting people on i would love a discount i'm taking a painting off the wall and just being like yo says this shit worth something <laughs> Shouts to Shouts to Shouts to Um Anyway, yeah, those are some crazy uh preemptive stories. So maybe if something crazy happened you you can laugh about what happened to me. Damn son. I know we're gonna laugh at this shit forever. Yo, when did you move to LA? Two thousand eight. Oh, mm -hmm. you've been here okay. a minute. I've been here for fifteen years, bro. What? Mm hmm You'd like it here? Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes hate it. Mm -hmm. It's a love and hate city. Mm -hmm. There's so many good things and then there's so many bad things about it that... I agree. You just have to kind of like sometimes, as all humans, mm -hmm. you swing the pendulum, right? Yeah. You know, you swing to this side. But then when you swing back over here, you see that it's actually mm -hmm. a pretty good place, man. You know? This is some shit I want to talk to you about, though, is because, you know, when I went to live in Taiwan, everyone was watching it and was like, bro, why did you come back? That place is so ill. I love Taiwan, but Hong Kong, I feel, is like similar. It's like such an ill city. What, why, what brought you here, and then why are you still here? Well, in 08, I had to move because mm -hmm. all that shit that happened to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where I, I literally, like, overnight, I had to move. Yeah. Um, Use the Google. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the images. Oh. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, basically... Um, I have a little bit more, thank you. Uh, actually, that's good, okay. good. Um, I chose LA because LA, there was space. So mm -hmm. on my plate, yeah. where I knew people and I could kind of integrate mm -hmm. was Tokyo, yeah. New York, London, or Los Angeles, mm -hmm. right? And I had spent so much time in Hong Kong, this brick concrete jungle. Yeah. I felt like California might be good for me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like open space and- Escape from Hong Kong type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and be in a total different kind of environment so I don't feel reminded, oh, this, oh, I remember this corner or this thing or this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like totally foreign, right? Mm -hmm. And I grew up in Vancouver, so it kind of has some Vancouver vibes. Yeah. I didn't, I couldn't go to Vancouver because there's too many Chinese people there. <laughs> and it would have been a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So I came to LA. And why did I stay? Um, I stayed, you know, I th I'd say half because of the people. Yeah. yeah. And then half because LA has changed a lot ever since 08. I mean, yeah. you know, um, with marijuana being legalized mm. came a wave of culture and lifestyle stuff. So restaurants, gallery, like small little galleries, like, you know, stuff like that, that was like made your life a little better. Even though it wasn't like yours, mm -hmm. like, you know, like you felt like, oh, there's more things to go out to instead of some, some Hollywood shits, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And no disrespect to the Hollywood shits, but you have to have a variety, man, you know? You have to have a variety. And I felt like when I first came here, it was hard for me to find something that I wanted to eat. And I'd say, like, really, like, this restaurant is ill. And maybe it's because I didn't know t enough places. But I feel like from like 2010 to 2018, there's like this crazy explosion. No, right? there you know? is. What, yo, that's interesting too, because like, I feel like it kind of started in some ways with like animal. You know what I mean? Like they ushered in like quite a 
different generation of chefs. But Son like of a for gun, you, the same, the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was around yeah. that time too. You know, so animal was impossible to get to. Best mm -hmm. Son animal. of a gun. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and it was like, oh God, you know. Yeah. Like, but like for you, what were the restaurants that made it like, oh shit, I like being here now. That now the food scene is ill. I mean, uh, not for nothing. I love John and Vinny's. Mm -hmm. I love John and Vinny's. Easy. I love the pizza. Mm -hmm. I used to like going down to Fairfax and just chilling with the Prem crew and just like yeah. you know talking shit yeah. being yeah. on the block. But even before then, right? Like, cause you oh eight. You're saying 2010. Like, what were the restaurants in 2010? Like, Motherfucker, I wasn't going nowhere, bro. I was like hiding out, man. Yeah. I was like, you know, Johnny Rockets up in there every day. <laughs> Really? Yo, I live right off oh, Melrose yeah, you in the hood. You can't go to SGV. You yeah. can't go eat Chinese no, food. No, no. So what's funny is is that when I first came back, I was craving iced lemon tea mm. and bubble waffles. Mm. Okay? So my friend was like, yo, I'm going to bring you. I'm going to bring you. It's a little while yeah. out, right? But there's a lot of Chinese people. So yeah. get ready. Yeah. I hadn't seen a Chinese motherfucker in months, man. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It felt like, you know? So it, we went there, walked into this restaurant, and the whole restaurant just silence right like wow like this yeah. right? in the chinese restaurant what yeah. restaurant was it i forgot man Word. um so i'm like oh, this like, is my homegirl uh, grace i'm like grace yo this is not cool man and she's like okay let's just eat and go let's just eat and go I'm like, okay okay we sit down within three minutes our table's full of plates oh shit. on the house right not one thing i eat <laughs> you know what i mean and i'm You're feeling like, so bad so i'm like man am i really gonna have to order on top of this because i oh. feel bad you know and then I I, 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 I didn't go back for months. <laughs> yo, for anyone that don't know, I feel like, all right, yo, this is a fun one, right? If I comped you to any actor, like in Hong Kong, like at that time with how many movies you had, I was like, and you were like, cool, people liked you. I was like, you was like Ryan Gosling of Hong Kong, would you say? I, I don't know, man. I mean, Ryan's, I, I don't like to, something, something I don't like, like to say okay, something okay, like, okay. yeah, you no, know what I mean? Bad, yeah, bad, yeah, yeah, I mean, I. I had yeah. bad movies, I had good movies. You no, know? no, no, yeah, no. But, I just meant like in terms of like notoriety so that people Yeah, maybe, know, that's yeah. That's why you went to the I, restaurant. I'd say somewhere like, around there, yeah. 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 No, no, in, in no way comparing no, the no. way you act yeah, or yeah. anything like that. But I was a huge fan, bro. Mm. Like huge fan of the shit. Like I still watch your shit all the time. Yeah. Initial you know, D, bro. That was my That was my life, man. Yeah. Acting was my life, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's crazy because in, um, in Hong Kong, it's like boot camp, train... Acting is boot camp. Act? No. Yo, what was it like out there? Mm -hmm. I was on a set for 72 hours straight once, yo. Holy shit. And and by the 60th hour, like asking to hang me on a wire and like pretend I'm kicking someone in the head. I'm Holy like, yo, <laughs> like for real, like I can't do this. Like it's not, I just physically can't do it. Like, you know, yeah, they're like, come exhausted. on, just do it. Just, yeah. we just need the, the lift off and then we'll have the stunt man kick him in the head. And I'm like, that's not what I want to do. Like anyway, but, yeah. but. Yeah. Not dissing it. I mean, it's a it's a grind. Yeah, it's yeah. a different it's a different Every system. Every country's different too. Every yeah. system different. I mean, there's positives I've, and negatives to it. When I was filming Infernal Affairs Part One, mm. yeah, um, night day shift in mm. in the in the day I was a cop and night I was a triad. Yeah, in a different movie. Yeah, <laughs> you would go from one set to the next set. And just film, yeah. Wait, wait, you were literally, no, because in, in the movie. No, I'm talking about, oh, I was filming a different movie. Movies. I was filming a whole different movie. Holy so shit. So I go day shoots on Infernal Affairs, and then I'd shoot this other movie, and I was a the total flip of the guy. Do you understand what I mean? How did you even, like, manage that in your head? Like, never mind just physically the demand, but it's like, okay, I have to remember these lines. Were you just, like, showing up and, and memorizing on the spot? Yeah. And in oh. Hong Kong, they do, they give you the script when you get there. So you're like day of. You know, lines like, on fresh day of. Wait, you never got the script before? No, you do, but they change. They'll change it however they want. Mm -hmm. It's not like it here. It doesn't take five levels. The guy says change yeah. it. The director's like, yeah, and they change Damn. it. You know what I mean? That's intense. Damn, son. Yeah. So what was your process? Like when you get on set, you do hair first, you do makeup first, or you sit first? I do hair and makeup, and we, we, we just feed in the sides man right? you know what I mean I'm more of like a method actor mm -hmm. so I like to use when I choose a character I use a, a menu of memories and I stay within those memories so that mm -hmm. when I use to a different character it's a different guy mm -hmm. because I, I if you use the full spectrum I feel mm -hmm. every time you go on set you're still that that one guy yes. yeah so I try to 
give it a menu and then I go to those moments because you felt pain more than once in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You felt joy more than once in your life. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's very rare moments where you have, there's only one time, like full devastation or whatever, right? Yeah. yeah. But that's how I scope it, uh, uh, my, my character out. Yeah. And then the sides just come like they're like, kind of just like sprinkles. You're you know basically what I mean? creating that character out of a specific cocktail of emotions and moments from your life that yeah. you know inside and out. Mm. And that, and it's it's ill to think about yeah. that in a way when you say menu as an actor, because it's like let's say you have an entire recipe book mm. of dishes, mm -hmm. which are your memories yep. and your experiences. Exactly. But for a certain restaurant you want to open, that's yep. your menu. Exactly, bro. And that's your character. Mm -hmm. I have a question. I think you can both answer it in different ways. Is there because you've written a lot of characters i'm sure you've played a lot of characters is there ever a time and if any like a character you kind of miss being in that headspace like when you're writing or i guess acting yeah, that's such a good question Ed, as you gotta go first mm. not really no i i don't i try to disassociate immediately okay <coughs> yeah because especially at the end of my career, mm -hmm. I was getting really deep into my characters. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was like finding my groove, you know what I mean? Where I'd go home, I'm staying with friends, I'd sleep in the foyer, like where the elevator hall is, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to keep that grittiness in me and like not go to a nice plush bed where, you know, I got air con and shit, right? So I still went home, but I'd take it, not like maybe Jared Leto Joker there, right? Yeah, yeah. But, I was trying to internally take it there, right? Yeah. So I, I, I try to let go immediately. So okay. like, is there moments on set, like family vibes that I missed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not really like a character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I've even met actors like six months after they're still carrying a character. Mm -hmm. And they'll openly tell you, I'm trying to shake it. I'm trying to shake it. And I, that's the type of shit where I'm like, damn, you, what y'all do is really like, you give blood to the cinema. It's really you know? crazy, yeah. Yeah, I don't think people realize what like really good actors who treat it with a lot of integrity are doing. Like you're literally giving up days, months of your lives to be in someone else's heart and mind. It's yeah. kind of fucking crazy. Yeah, and that's why, and I'm not saying that I can like overnight disassociate. Like it right. takes it takes time yeah. too, but the, it's like the better you flush it out mm -hmm. because you know, you still have your community like and they they like imagine eddie came back from like this serial killer movie and he's oh aggro and he's yeah. like you know doing all the shit we're like yeah. yo where's eddie at dude yeah, come yeah. on you dude i don't want to chill with this yo there was a dude i had that had played a character with a glass eye before he came <laughs> on so <laughs> literally he would end lines and be like the head would chill and i'm like yo son you notice like and he's like fuck man i'm trying to shake that guy my bad the last character i had had a glass eye that's what i'm saying dude yeah <laughs> yeah that's just so fucking <laughs> harvey matey you know what i mean like it's like if i fuck out a glass eye. yeah but you gotta still respect that guy because i respect he went there because there's some actors that just show up on set yeah um this dude literally showed up with a glass eye I mean, not physically, but like <laughs> metaphorically, he still yeah. like he was carrying I feel his eyes. That's wild. Yeah. yeah, I love that shit. Mm. Like, no, that's real as fuck. I just love how far actors go. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's incredible. And then, like, director and actor, you're kind of pushing each other. Like, how far can we go with this? Yeah, and it's a lot of fun. That's why one time, I remember I had a conversation with you. I think it was at the Polo Lounge or some shit yeah. a little while ago. And you're like, "Yo, what do you think you can't do?" And I was like, "I can't do a love story right now, dude. I can't, because." I'm so into my partner mm -hmm. yeah. that I can't even fathom trying to escape that and going somewhere else. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I don't, and then I don't want to get lost in it either. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like get scary. lost in it. Cause, cause like I said, you as a director and an actor, you understand that you expect these people to be thoroughbreds, right? That, that you were on set to be professional, right? Mm -hmm. And to be professional, if it's a love story, you have to love this month. Yeah, yeah, Like, didn't yeah, sound yeah, like yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, no matter what, especially when the cameras are on, right? Mm -hmm. And that's still life. That's still moments, right? You have to go and, there. And I don't know if I could do that because right now, like, if someone was like, yeah. even, look, do Titanic, like, you know, James Cameron, and then uh -huh. I'd be like, hmm. Jim. But, <laughs> you know, but, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'd be like, fuck, I don't know if I can do it, man, because yeah. my, I feel like it might affect the, my life a little too, too much. Yeah. And even yeah. writing is just like, if you're being true and honest of your feelings in the moment, 
all of my stuff is stuff I'm going through in our relationship in life right now. Yeah. You know, like that's the best stuff because you're feeling it and you're thinking it. And somebody asked me my process the other day. I was walking with um, Bao Nguyen, good dude. He, he's the director of Be Water. I like him a lot. But he was asking me about my process. And I was like, yo, homie, like I can't outline. Like I can outline, but once I've outlined, I don't want to write the script. And he's like, why? And I was like, because I can write because I'm curious. I write the shit out because I'm curious what's going to happen and what this character is thinking. And I'm in his head or her head and I'm living it out and I'm doing it. And that's why like no one can get me out of the chair. Like I'll disappear there for days at a time and just keep going because I'm like in this world and I'm in this head. But if I outline it all out, when I go to write it, there's no curiosity because it's been figured out. Mm -hmm. It's been solved. And like a math equation that's already been solved, just there's no curiosity left. So I have full, multiple folders of outlines of just shit that's done. And I'm like, I don't even care to write it because mm -hmm. I'm not interested or curious to be in that right now because I know the answer. Yeah. Yeah. So now when I write, I don't outline, I don't do anything, I just write it all the way through. And then... In Hollywood, because when you sell a script, you got to give an outline, then the script. I just write the script, then I write the outline off the script I wrote, and then turn that in. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's interesting because you know when when whenever we go to these um, creative meetings, people are like, so what's your thought process? You know, uh -huh. and I just tell them like th like literally, when we do things, especially for clot, right? Because I I do creative things for different people, and like I try to wear a different hat every time, even though it's still me. Yeah, and I can't escape certain elements of me. But um, for Clot, what we do is when there's a project, we think of how we're going to promote it. And then we design the product. Interesting. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Because it's almost like the same thing as you, yeah, right? Because is. if you've already designed it, of course, the, the, the promotion is going to be calculated this way and equated into the formula this way, right? But that's when, you, when you're thinking of end, end, like what the image looks like. Yeah. You can, have, you can do whatever you want with it, right? Because on a t-shirt, what are you going to do, right? They're going to just put a picture, or put a graphic, get an artist to do something. Yeah. But if you think about that t-shirt and how you're going to promote it, mm -hmm. you suddenly get a little bit more excited. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, and then you bring the creative back. Then, and I think that that's almost the same way as like how you're writing, right? Yeah. Because it's like you're... You kinda, have a fully hmm. realized vision. You yeah, can get there. Exactly. Because if you have the minute detail you're done with it like you know mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah there is shit that i miss writing though like yeah. once the script's done i'm like damn i don't get to write that guy again that's why you gotta do part two right yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. unless true. he's dead <laughs> that's true unless yeah. he's dead i felt like we had the most fun when i was writing tuna melt like that was really fun to like write and read and stuff like that mm, yeah that character was cool yeah because it was like looking at a version of myself that I understood inside and out. Like an old person mm -hmm. that I'd grown out of. And it was fun to play with that fool. Yeah. And I think it's fun. Like, I don't write with you. But I think if you have a character that you're just like kind of conceptualizing, yeah. I like doing that with you. Yeah. I like just playing around with different ideas of like who this person is or where they came from or what motivates them, whatever. Yeah. It's like how he, fun. when he gets a script, he'll create the cocktail out of his yeah. emotions. We, when I'm writing the same thing, we take our experiences and things that have happened with certain people and be like, that's that person's experiences. And then totally. we, we go write it, you know, like, oh, yeah. yeah. I, would just, I always just like sitting at the table. If I start pacing, she's like, oh, fuck, he's going to ask me to brainstorm this shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's fun. She's like, I'm going to no, take I a bath now. It. So yeah, I power be in, down. Yeah, I hit my power the, down button. I'm like, in the chill mode over here. I love that you said that about wifey though, that you can't do a rom-com right now because you're in love with her. It's like, I, I do, we do everything together. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I don't know. Like, I want to do everything together. No, and there's, they, look, there's, there, there are certain things that you can give some leeway in life. And yeah. this is one thing that I can't. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? That's it. Like, no, you know, and it fair. sounds cheesy and corny, but when you love someone, it's that, that's it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. I, I mean, if I was maybe, and, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm anywhere close or far from these people, but like, you know, some of these actors, maybe they really can switch it off like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't, you know, and I, you have to understand who you are, right? You yeah. know, and I'm not saying I'm worse or better of an actor, but 
I can't go down that road. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I can't. Yeah. Well, it's like a tale as old as time, right? Like, people really do fall in love when they make movies. Like, we've seen it a million times. We've 100%. seen Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie make 1000%. a movie together, and now they've been married for 10 plus years. Yeah. It's like, that happens. It's a real thing. You put your whole being into that shit. Yeah. You know, every, every project I've done, I've brought you, like, we've auditioned together, and we've done stuff, because yeah. I'm just like, I can't wait to work with Ed. Yeah. Like I, I really, you're you're the dude because I was watching you before I got in the film and I was like, yo, the stories I want to tell, he understands. They're, like that is what I think is ill about me, you, and Wu. You know, and that's why like I always hit up Wu, get Wu involved, is because we're kind of Asian dudes that step outside of the life our parents wanted us to live mm-hmm. and the model minority thing, but we still really love being Chinese mm-hmm. or Taiwanese or mm-hmm. Cantonese, and. We have a lot of pride, even though we're not fully accepted by our community. Mm. And I'm just like, that's an interesting spot to live in on the spectrum of identity, mm. right? Where it's like, our community is proud of us. Our community is embarrassed of us. Exactly, yeah. Our community respects us, but we don't actually... But they shun us also. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? They like, yeah. respectfully shun you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, but then at the, it's a trip, right? And in a way, I'm like, this is actual family. It's like in your family, like, yeah. but there's love. Like, there's mad love at the end of the day. Like, of course, you yeah. love being fucking Chinese, dog. Yeah, same yeah. with me. Me like, too, man. It's just, like, I, it's, it's crazy because I literally, you know, I went back to China for the first time in uh, three and a half years a couple weeks ago, uh-huh. and you know, my 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 team, you know, they whoever I'm, whoever I am in China, and they're like, hey, we don't want you ever leaving the hotel. We just want you to uh. go to your events and go to your whatevers and just go home right and you know i'm a i used to be a very volatile guy i'm you know kind of wild you say something to me you know like <laughs> yeah. bang bang Spicy. bang right but you know i'm more mature now and i was like hey look i really want to go out and meet people like you know not yeah. on the street but can you arrange some interesting people directors yeah. actors photographers whoever so i went and did this podcast and the guy asked me what is it that you want to say and i said how can I be more Chinese to you guys? Oh, Do you understand what I mean? Like, yeah. like no, not, not in like yeah, a plea, no, but, but yo, like, yeah. son, I, I just know how you feel, dog. No, yeah, yeah, and I was just like, yo, like seriously, feel. like, sure, I might not have the accent right or whatever, but mm. it's who I am. Like, you can't tell me who I am. I can yeah. tell you who I am, like, yeah. you know? And they're like, you know, but you were born in Canada. I was like, so let me ask you this. Does it mean if a black man was born in China, he's Chinese? No, man. Yeah. You can't put that on someone, you know? Like, you know? Yeah. And I'll tell you, this is the thing about our society and culture that upsets me the most is like, at the end of the day, the love is unconditional between people like mother, father, son, everything. But it's like almost until we're dead, all like Chinese people maintain this front of conditioned love. Like especially with our parents and family, where it's like, all right, if you do that, I'm not gonna love you. And yo, because you did that, I don't love you. But when you die, they're the ones crying the hardest at the funeral. Oh, I, I, I never told him it was a, like bro, every time somebody's died in my family, it's just like all hell breaks loose. Everybody loves the person crazy. We all regret not saying what we should have fucking said. And it's like, let's never do it again. And you do it again and again and yeah. again. And I'm sure every culture is like this, but ours is so fucking crazy about like needing to maintain this face like I'm teaching you a lesson. Mm-hmm. You know? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I literally told like, you know, it's not like there's any form of negativity from my end, you know? So why is it being reciprocated this way? <laughs> like, mm. you know, like it's yeah. like... I. Like, especially for me, like, like the thing that I say to them is, is like, look, sure, I might, you know, you might see that I, I look a little different from you guys, but I gave you guys this, I gave you guys this, I brought this to Asia, like, and I, although it might not just be me, I helped push youth culture and I helped this and you guys should be proud of me for it. Like, you know, yeah. like you should be happy. But there were not many people I would watch in China from my couch in Orlando, Florida and be proud of and be like, I would... I would love to smoke a joint with son. I would love to like roll out with son. Like, you know, I would be cool with him. And then I met you and I was like, hey, easy, get a-. We never have no issue getting along. No, it's man, like no. easy, natural. Yeah, it's because, you know, we recognize, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. It's for easy. Sure. What's it like for like, the, yeah, like, okay, you know how everyone knows the Chinese community is like model minority and stuff like that and the expectations? Yeah. For Greeks that are like a little more independent of the identity, is there a thing or nah? 
You know what's crazy is my best, one of my best friends yeah. is half Greek, half Chinese. Really? Our baby Dude, will so be half Greek, photo? half Chinese. They're very good looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very oh, good looking. Really? What are we going to make? Womanize us. I'm not a womanizer. That's no, I'm saying the kids were. I've been my whole life. Oh, the kids are womanizers. Yeah. The kids. motherfucker said all. I said the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't know their mom and dad that well. Like, you know, I know the kids. I know their kids. So, shouts to Pablo and Ilias. That is the Yeah, Pablo and Ilias are the names. Yeah. That's and great. Aeneas, Aeneas, oh, yeah. Aeneas so there's three really kids, yeah. yeah. Aeneas, cool. yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think Greek. Growing up Greek American, it's different because there's no physical barrier. You know, yeah. like we just look like white people, mm -hmm. so there was none of that, and it was really easy to just kind of like immerse yourself in what all your friends were doing and then break the rules and there was really i find my generation like my cousins and our parents were all born in greece and came over so we're first gen but just didn't give a fuck we were like oh you're gonna hate us cool you don't like what we're doing cool and it was easy for me because i'm the youngest it was my cousins that came before me that really like were like we're gonna smoke weed and we're gonna go out and we're gonna do all these things and we're not gonna we're not gonna run the restaurants that you guys came here and built like we want different for our lives. And so when I was growing up, by that point, they had already like broken down every barrier. Mm. So yeah. my, my mom was just like, oh, she's like, she's just like on a path and yeah. that's okay. And my mom was very much the black sheep of her family too. So I have a very skewed and different opinion yeah. of that. You guys had the ability to pass and assimilate in a way like- For sure, it was so different. A little harder for us. And know, it, for me, twofold, like I'm the first person in my family that wasn't fully Greek. Yeah which was like oh, insane at the time. Like my mom not marrying a Greek man yeah. was unheard of. Her parents wouldn't even look at my dad for, Great. I think until I was like two or three. Yeah. Wouldn't acknowledge him if he was in the room, wouldn't look his way, wouldn't talk to him, wouldn't speak to him. And I think like it was once I was born that they warmed up. But she was always like the maverick. She was doing all the shit. So when it comes to me, I never had any expectations or because it would have been hypocritical of her. She was yeah. like, I came here and I did whatever the fuck I wanted to. So I don't expect you to follow these like old rules and traditions that yeah. we set. Yeah. From that generation, I feel like from the 80s on, it got much less of that. But I also remember yeah. like old uncles and aunties that are just like no to certain races there's a lot of shit talking and there's a lot of gossiping and people are going to say what they want to say but yeah it's changed a lot and i think it's really like i don't know i'm making julius depends where you grew up like i grew up in boston it was so diverse mm -hmm. already so it was kind of the norm this is the julius plate Damn. Hell yeah. Damn, Julius. This looks the, phenomenal. The, the Julius, not Randall, though. And yo, I, I, the Julius, not no Randall, Randall. I feel like this is the episode. And yo, shouts to Edison. Edison brought us the McDonald's hats, bro. Look at this McDonald's hat. Wait, I love it. 53,000, guys. This hat is available in 53,000 stores. Yeah, in China. So you got no excuse not to cop with you in China. Wait, I love it. <laughs> You can't get it here though, no? No, you can't. You can't? Not no. even so online? China exclusive. No. Oh. Yeah. It's like the egg custard at KFC. China Damn. exclusive. Just, uh, I'm dying to go to KFC in China. Yeah. I just hear that it's like better. See, no matter how mad old Chinese people get at us, we still rep in China, you know? <laughs> Always. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. No, of course. I appreciate yes, it, sir. bro.